ಸಹನಾವತು ಸಹನೋ ಭುನಕ್ತು ಸಹ ವೀರ್ಯ ಕರವಾವಹೈ ತೇಜಸ್ವಿನಾವಧೀತಮಸ್ತು ಮಾ ವಿದ್ವಿಷಾವಹೈ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 Sairam everyone. We are going on to the 11th Anuvaka of Shri Rudram. This is the final Anuvaka. Um, I'll just give a, a short overview of the Anuvaka. Uh, this Anuvaka consists of both trip mantras as well as yajus mantras all the other anuvakas we looked at the first anuvaka had only rit mantras thereafter we saw all the other anuvakas to 2 to 9 having yajus mantras and then the 10th anuvaka had only rit mantras in this there are rit mantras as well as yajus mantras there are 10 rit mantras and 3 yajus mantras um this anuvaka actually submits prayers to the multitude of ganas through which lord rudra manifests around the world in this earth um so all the manifestations are mentioned in this uh, anuvaka um the prayers it was feel that you know the devotees have gained by saluting to the lord now they have uh, they received the grace of the lord and um, they are with, uh, wishing themselves and maybe instructing themselves as to what they should do to fully benefit from the prayers which they have offered so that's the way i have taken this um, there may be slight departures from the bhasha commentators traditional commentators i i have pointed out but i have also given you what the commentators say and i will give you the reasons why you know there's slight departure on my part uh, whether it's allowed or not i don't know i will just submit to swami uh, but i will say say things as they are you know what is my um interpretation and uh, and what the commentators have said so i will let you decide uh, whether you want to ignore or not um, but i thought i will share what i felt deeply okay uh, with those words uh, let's uh, get into the anuvaka sahasrani ಸಹಸ್ರಶೋ ಯೇ ರುದ್ರ ಅಧಿಭೂಮ್ಯಾಸ್ರಯೋಜನೆಧನ್ವಾ ತನ್ಮಸಿ ಸಹಸ್ರಿ ಸಹಸ್ರಶೋ ಯೇ ರುದ್ರ ಅಧಿಭೂಮ್ಯಾ ಸಹಸ್ರಯೋಜನೆವ ಧನ್ವಾನಿ ತನ್ಮಸಿ ಸಹಸ್ರಿ ಸಹಸ್ರಶೋ ಯೇ ರುದ್ರ ಅಧಿಭೂಮ್ಯಾಂ ಸಹಸ್ರಯೋಜನೆವ ಧನ್ವಾನಿ ತನ್ಮಸಿ ಐ ಥಿಂಕ್ ಸಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಯು ಮೇ ಬಿ ವಾಂಡರಿಂಗ್ ಹೂ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಲಿಸನ್ ಟ
the Rudra, that this is Tesha Gum. That's the way it's chanted. How the Gum is missing, I have, as I have mentioned in the past, the Anuswara M becomes Gum in Yajur Veda tradition of chanting. Um, so, but for the purpose of understanding the meaning, the original word is taken, which is Tesha. It's only for chanting purposes, the gum is added instead of the gum. Uh, so with those words, I will go to, I will just point out any uh, letters, consonants which need special attention. Sahasrana, Saharsha, Sho, Ye, Rudra. Adhi, this Adhi is the fourth letter, the Dha in that Dhi is the fourth letter in the Varga, so it has to be aspirated. Okay. Um, then the second line, the sham, the sha is cerebral sha, so the tongue should point upwards. The sham, sahasra yojaneva, dhanvani. The, again, the dha is uh, aspirated because it's the fourth letter in the varga. Okay. So that those are the two two or three points where you may have to pay a little bit of attention. Uh, now let's look at the, the Pada form that is removing the Sandhis. There are not too many uh, differences, but I will anyway go through. Sahasrani, there is no change. The Sahasra Shaha has become Sahasra Sho because of Sandhi. The Visarga has become O. Uh, Sahasra Shaha. A. Rudraha. Here also Visarga is actually dropped because of Sandhi. So that's how you have Rudra, but the uh, word without the Sandhi is Rudraha. Adhibhumyam, Tesam. Then the next uh, three words actually have become one word because of Sandhi. So the words are Sahasri Yojane is one word. Ava, the A has become Avagraha, which is silent. Uh, and uh, that's Sandiru. I think we have come across that before. Ava Dhanvani, there is, even though the, there is Sandhi, there is no change between Va and Dha. Okay. Tanmasi. So that's in terms of um, Padavicheta or splitting of the Sandhi. So now we let's go to looking at the meaning. So let's, uh, the first word is Sahasrani. Okay. Uh, Sahasram means 1000. Sahasrani means many thousands, thousands, plural. Okay. I also want to mention that I think I may have um, covered that in one of the earlier lessons, I think when we started the Rudram itself, the introduction. Sahasram means, also means infinite. Shatam, Sahasram, Sarvam. These three words are called Akshaya Vachakam. That means they are limitless. Okay. So that way also you can take, you know, they, though it's a number given, it can also mean infinite, akshaya, okay? Sahasra, thousands. Sahasra shaha means thousand kinds. I think Sahasra dha also we have looked at the earlier, the last mantra of the Tenthanuvaka. Here it means thousand ways, thousand kinds, thousand ways, that kind of meaning. Okay. Ye, ye means which those you know when you refer who or something like that you know who did that that person you know that kind of a meaning those who did you know those who you know that kind of a meaning so ye whoever that we also you can see okay it's a plural word also ye rudraha means plural which is rudras okay many rudras adhi Bhumyam. Okay. The word uh, Bhumi 
Bhumi means earth. Okay. Bhumiya means on earth. Okay, it's the seventh vibhakti of the word Bhumi. Okay, Bhumiyam means singular seventh vibhakti, that which means in, on, above, or you know that kind of thing. Across all that kind of meaning comes with the seventh vibhakti. Okay. In Tamil, we'll say kan, adan kan. You know that kind of a meaning. I don't know for those. Sahasra, um, adi bhumiya. Adi means um, settling on that, residi residing on that, also ruling. Adi means who has control over. Okay. Adi bhumiya. Okay. So these rudras have adhibhumi they are actually have control over the earth okay they they rule over the earth okay. so there are thousands those rudras okay in thousands and who in thousands of ways in thousand kinds rule over the earth okay that's the meaning of the first line then comes the second line Tesham. Tesham means there. Tesham means there. So we are referring to some people, those people, okay, that kind of a meaning. Those Rudras of there, okay. Sahasra Yojane. Sahasra again means 1000. Then there's another word called Yojana. Yojana means it's a measure of distance. Sahasra Yojane means, in this case also it's seventh vibhakti, but it's what we are saying is across in all those thousands of yojanas, that kind of a meaning. We'll come back to you know how the uh, traditional commentary is there, but I will just okay, give you this across thousands of yojanas. Some technical detail here. Um, one yojana. Is apparently about eight miles or 12.8 kilometers. It's an Indian ancient measurement system. Yojana is something equivalent to the way we call miles or kilometers, a large distance. So the Yojana is equivalent to eight miles or 12.8 kilometers. The conversion into miles or kilometers. Okay, 12.8. So if you say 1000 Yojanas, that works out to 12,800 kilometers, 12,800 kilometers or 8,000 miles, whichever way we look at it. I just wanted to point out some interesting fact. The diameter of the Earth is 12,742 kilometers. So you can say the, diamond, the diameter of the Earth is 1,000 yojanas. So from where we are, the farthest distance on earth, maybe if you cut across below our feet and reaches the farthest distance where the earth stretches out from beneath our feet is 12,800 kilometers or 1,000 yojanas. I'll come back, you know, why I mentioned that uh, later. Then the word comes, our. Okay. Our, our has the meaning favorable, beneficent, grace, you know, all those kind of meanings. So our dhanvani means dhanvani means bow, the bow. Okay. Bows is a plural. Okay. Okay. Our dhanvani. The next word is tanmasi. So tanmasi um, is a plural uh, verb, okay? Um, I would say similar to something like the mahi. You know, the mahi is there, no? So that means we meditate with mahe, mahe, mahi. So masi is also the same way, okay? That kind of, we are all doing something, okay? Masi. It's only this... Uh, this verb ending is only prevalent in the Vedic 
x in the classical sanskrit it doesn't exist so you can say tanmahi or tanmahi you know something of that sort then word what is tan the word tan has multiple meanings it means propagate spreading keeping something somewhere okay that kind of a meaning is given by tanmasi okay so this is this is a meaning which i have given avadhanvani is i am telling the beneficent bows the beneficent or favorable bows of all these rudras who are ruling over all this world okay tanmasi that means we will spread it we will spread okay because tanmas is we doing something in this case in this mantra we are not asking the lord to do we saying we will do like you know uh, we are saying uh, in the gayatri we say the uh, mahi that means we meditate so that means we propagate it is something which we have to do we shall do it something of that sort, okay or we shall propagate that kind of a meaning so i am say the meaning which i have given for this is those thousands of rudras who rule the earth in thousands of ways we shall spread their beneficent bows across thousands of yojanas okay see the thing is it's also believed if you sit in one place and chant rudram that rudram can reach a distance of 1000 yojanas that any rudra mantras if it is chanted with devotion it can reach 1000 yojanas so that means the mantra has the power of reaching 1000 yojanas so if one we sit in one place and chant if we if we chanting it lot of devotion and with total the impact will be felt for 1000 yojanas that means if we do this sadhana we can help bring about something good in this world and that kind of a meaning also we can take and we also have to do everything possible so that everything in this earth is also looked after so it's a responsibility it's a, it's some a, something which we determine for ourselves we have prayed to the rudra all this time now he has given us the grace now we have to spread it so that's the meaning i have given okay now i will give you i put a note the whole meaning is not found in any of the bhashyas or commentaries the next slide provides the meaning from commentaries because i want you to choose for yourself and i will give you the reasonings which i had given for giving this the meaning from commentaries all the commentaries have without any exception given this meaning so i will give that also all the words are fine but what they have done is they have taken the our and put it with tanmasi Okay, our tanmasi. So what they are saying is, so I see I should have removed this. Sorry, this doesn't belong. Okay, sorry. So what they are saying is, we cause the our tanmasi means you lose. We loosen the bow and keep it somewhere. Our tanmasi means you loosening the bow string and keeping it somewhere. Oh, okay so the meaning which they have given all the commentators is those thousands of rudras who rule the earth in thousands of ways we cause their bows to be loosened and deposited thousands of yojanas away that means we want the bows to be kept 1000s of yojanas away so that's the meaning uh, which the bhashya karakas have given this they have put taken the our and put it along with tanmasi and given the meaning our tanmasi uh, so now i will just spend a little bit of time why you know i did not choose this uh, as you know my understanding and i have given you the previous one a few reasons um, i think the previous anuvaka we saw we asking the lord to take his book, keep the your uh, arrow somewhere very high okay 
and you bring you bring you come to us with your bow this is something which uh, we looked at if you'll go back and looked at uh, the previous anuvaka so that means we have already prayed to the rudra to come with his bow to us but um, then how can we ask him to keep it away so that is one thought which i had then there are people who can say but you know the other rudras the original rudra we want him to come but the other rudras we want them to be far away that's also another meaning which is also equally valid i, I would say because we think there are other rudras thousands of rudras we don't want them anywhere near let them keep their bows somewhere far um then the second question i had was uh, even if those bows are kept there they are effective at long distances even those rudras wherever they are um dure vadhaya cha you know i think that's something which we looked at that means they can attack from far dure vadhaya okay uh, so so i felt when lord rudra is there what about the other rudras you know we don't have to worry about them uh, because we have prayed to the rudra so i have taken the meaning as something which we will keep spreading the positive beneficent bows of the lord all over them, everywhere for thousands across thousands of miles so that's the meaning i have given i will leave it to you to choose whichever you wish to choose okay i will um, then we will we'll proceed i also just wanted to mention this this tesham sahastra yojane avadhanvasi tan okay danvani tanmasi he appears in the first mantra in in this uh, anuvaka and the same man, same line appears in the 10th mantra in this anuvaka so what it basically means is this line belongs to has to be applied to every single line between the first line and the 10th line so that is for nine for first nine anuvaka so number 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 we have to apply this line to understand the full meaning of that each mantra so we will look at that okay later um i'll just um the rishi for this mantra which we read is durvasa durvasa rishi is the one who is supposed to have discovered this meaning this mantra and the chandas for this mantra is anushtuk and the devata the lord whom we pray to is rudra himself shri rudra okay now i want to go through some meanings uh, so i'm his disc- from discourses but i was able to pick education must impart those qualities in the individual that will ensure his peace and thereby universal peace it should cleanse the mind of all traces of narrowness and help in fostering unity and love this is the message of bharat from time immemorial the vedas revealed vedas revealed scriptures of supreme knowledge proclaim these as the goals of education this is veda bhumi the land that reveres the vedas which the sages learn through divine revelation the seeds of this message grew up as saplings and blossomed in the garden of the upanishads these saplings then grew in and in into ancient shastras spiritual sciences and the winds carried the fragrance of their ananda divine bliss to the four corners of the world to vitalize and awaken the people of all continents so this is a discourse swami gave in 30th july 77 i picked this up because you know we are saying we are praying that those the bows whether it, they are kept far away or whether um, my interpretation that you know we should spread the positive bows of the lord everywhere 
why because we want something peace and universal peace you know we want good for everyone okay now that's the reason why i said the bow should not be kept far away means where will the god leave you leave them where people are not exiled because everywhere something exists so um so the universal peace comes then swami has also used the word bhumi adibhumiyam so in the in the verse there is the word bhumi so swami calls bharat the way the bhumi because that is where this mantra was received the rishis received it in veda bhumi in bharat okay then he says the ananda the winds carried the fragrance of the ananda to the four corners of the world so in the veda bhumi this mantra has originated so that by spreading to far, the far corners of the world it will vitalize and awaken the people of all continents so because of that reason i felt whatever we have received should be spread we don't have to worry about a bow or arrow hurting us because when everything is the lord even if he hurts it is for correcting us he is in his hand so ideally that kind of a prayer would be beneficial was my thought so that's why i picked that and they will take another excerpt from swami's discourse it's a slightly longer one but we will read it monkhood or sanyasa does not mean the mere acceptance of the fourth stage of life and its rights and obligations retirement into the forest after breaking off contacts with the world and leading the austere life of an ascetic okay instead the renunciant sanyasin must move among people become aware of their sorrows and joys and impart the instruction and inspiration they direly need monk should fulfill this duty the renunciation can be likened to a species of fish the fish moves around in the depth of the lake it is not stationary at one spot and while moving around the fish eats up worms and eggs of pests thus cleansing the water so to the renunciation should always be on the move journeying to the far corners of the land the renunciant's duty is to cleanse the society of evil by example and precept the renunciant's teachings must transform it into a society free from vice and wickedness the tree can spread its branches wide but the branches can put forth blossoms that yield fruit only when the roots are fed with water instead if the water is poured on the branches fruits and flowers how can the tree grow and spread society has the qualities of devotion and dedication as its roots of prosperity and peace hence the educational system must pay attention to the promotion of strengthening of these qualities among people people who occupy positions of authority are named officials adhikaris that word can also mean the worst enemy enemy adhika ari so swami is instead of splitting it as adhi and kari if he split it as adhika ari ari means enemy adhika means worst or very you know uh, superlative you know a lot um true official should carry carefully avoid the that course and use their positions to serve people under their care in olden times when people of any region were sunk in fear or anxiety or when the sources of joy and contentment ran dry they traced the cause of the calamity to some fault or failure in the worship offered to god in the temples of that area they sought to identify the mistakes and correct them so they could have inner peace 
they believe that the crisis could be controlled through these means such acts are now bundled together and labeled superstitions to be cast aside but this is not superstition modern scientists are in such a pathetically poor state of understanding that they don't recognize these important problems this is the preliminary stage of confusion caused by the progress of modern types of education the ancients grasped the supreme truth only after personally experiencing its validity the moderns however dismiss their discoveries this is the reason for the growth of barbarism in the so called civilized countries many have not recognized this fact this excerpt is from vidya vahini chapter 11 the reason i picked up uh, this was um, swami is talking about uh, see in this mantra which we uh, looked at the word tanmasi comes that means we are doing we are not even asking the lord the lord we are making the bows even if you want to say it's loosen thousands of miles away means it is our job to loosen the bows thousands of miles that means any problem any uh, anything which threatens peace has to be removed even if we say we are doing that or we are saying we are we are spreading the positive bows also everywhere that is also done by us so this is something which so who is who are the ones who are doing it that means sanyasins are the ones who do this work so that is the reason i picked this and um, so what each each and every one has to do i thought that uh, sort of appealed to me so i picked this up and there's nowhere i could get get an excerpt where swami says let the weapons of the lord keep kept away um so that's the reality because last time also i did not uh, i think last hanwak i did not pick uh, except so i i got received some complaints that you know i am not re- re- you know i'm getting so i thought i would because the interpretation is slightly different from the traditional interpretation of the mantra we have received the grace of the lord by praying through all the 10 nan workers now it's time we do something about it uh, that's the way i took so the entire mantra is your 10 rik mantras basically tell us this we have to do you can with with loosening the bows for thousands of miles so yojanas or we spread the positive dhanus everywhere okay so that's the meaning so we'll go to the next mantra asmin mahatyarnaventarikshe bhava adhi asmin mahat ತರ್ನವೇಂತರಿಕ್ಷೆ ಭವ ಅಧಿ ಅಸ್ಮಿನ್ ಮಹತ್ಯರ್ನವೇಂತರಿಕ್ಷೆ ಭವ ಅಧಿ ದಿಸ್ ದ ಮಂತ್ರ ಇನ್ ಟರ್ಮ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಪ್ರೊನೌನ್ಸಿಯೇಷನ್ ಅಂತರಿಕ್ಷೆ ದರ್ ಸಗೇನ್ ಶ ವಿಸ್ ವಿತ್ ಟಂಗ್ ರೈಸ್ ಅಪ್ ಪಾಯಿಂಟಿಂಗ್ ಅಪ್ವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಭ Bha is again fourth letter in the per varka so it has to be aspirated adhi the dhi is also fourth letter in the ter varga so that has to be aspirated okay and you know i have put this tesham sahasra yojane va dhanvani tanmasi is implied for this mantra also okay uh, you look at the pada vicheda the separation of the words word split asmin mahati asmin the next word is mahati and the third word is arnave okay this mahati arnave e plus a becomes ya so it has become mahatyarnave okay mahatyarnave ve and a again sandhi forms and the a becomes an avagraha that means it's silent okay arnavantarikshe that's a way but it's arnave antarikshe bhavaha again the visarga is dropped because sandhi bhavaha adhi okay. 
we will look at the meaning word to word meaning asmin in this asmin means in this mahati great okay big huge whichever you want to call it big or large arnave arnava means ocean arnava means ocean arnave is the seventh vibhakti which is in the ocean or on the ocean okay seventh vibhakti so arnave so in this great ocean okay in sanskrit the the adjectives also take on the same ending of the word based on the vibhakti so in this in this ocean or in this sky okay antarikshe has multiple meanings being given um, i am used the word sky um, they say antarikshe means that which is between the heaven and earth between heaven and earth the space whatever is there in between we already looked at bhumi adibhumiya now they are talking about antarikshe heaven is there between that okay uh, i've used the word sky but it also means the, the gross body this also can mean subtle that's also one meaning you can take subtle body also can be in the in that sense but you can say the atmosphere so i have just uh, left it here uh, so I, uh, i did not want to go into too many details it will become complicated but you can take it as gross subtle then we will see it will go to the causal also but this is earth the time the space between heaven and earth is antariksha okay antariksha bhava who exist who remain okay who reside the rudras who reside in the antariksha adhi adhi means they also rule over adhi bhumiyam we looked at okay so first we have covered all the rudras on earth now we are covering all the rudras between earth and heaven antariksha on the sky so the meaning is given those rudras who reside and rule over this in this great ocean and sky we shall spread the benefits in both across thousands of yojanas okay i have only gone with you know the meaning which i appreciate i hope it's okay you can replace it with we shall cause the bows to be unstrung and kept far away thousands of yojanas away that also can be taken if you want to go with the commentaries uh, so that is the second mantra there was some thought which I, okay arnave so i will okay. mahati arnave means a great ocean so some of the commentators have said mahati arnave this great ocean means the ocean of samsara because the word bhava is also used this bhava is the greatest ocean okay where we are born and die again born and die again okay basically we travel to the subtle world and come back to the gross world subtle world and come back to the gross world so that is also taken as bhava arnave antariksha okay that means you know when we die we are not on earth we have not reached the heaven somewhere in between <laughs> so that somewhere in between whoever rules over we want to have an impact there also that meaning also can be taken uh, so i will just leave it at that and then we will go on to the some other details as this mantra was also conceived by or received by sage durvasa the chandas is same anushtu the lord is rudra we'll go to the third mantra okay neelagrivaha shiti kanthaha sharva adha kshamachara 
ನೀಲಗ್ರೀವಾ ಶಿಥಿಕಂಠಾ ಶರ್ವಾ ಅಧ ಕ್ಷಮಾಚರ ನೀಲಗ್ರೀವಾ ಶಿಥಿಕಂಠಾ ಶರ್ವ ಅಧ ಕ್ಷಮಾಚರ ವಿ ಲುಕ್ ಎಟ್ ದ ಅದರ್ ಸ್ಪ್ಲಿಟ್ ಆಕ್ಚುಲಿ ದೇರ್ ಇಸ್ ನೋ ಚೇಂಜ್ ಎಕ್ಸೆಪ್ಟ್ ದರ್ಡ್ ಶರ್ವಾ ದ ವಿಸರ್ಗ ಇಸ್ ಡ್ರಾಪ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಸಂಧಿ ಅದರ್ವೈಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಆರ್ ನೋ ಚೇಂಜಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಪದ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ಆರ್ ದಿಸ್ ವರ್ಡ್ ಸ್ಪ್ಲಿಟ್ ವಿ ಲುಕ್ ಎಟ್ ದ ಮೀನಿಂಗ್ okay thank you very much i think i i made a mistake of um, not changing the i oh i see so thank you very much i will fix the title of the Uh, slides to 11th and vaka but uh, i will save it once i do that okay thank you very much for pointing out okay so i think we have cover, uh, let's look at the meanings okay neela griva i think we have already looked at neela griva and shitikanta earlier on i hope you all remember but we will again go through neela griva okay neela means blue or black which were you want griva is the neck okay neck is griva grivaha means neela griva her means one person who has blue neck this neela griva means many many who have blue necks or black necks chiti kanthaha kanthaha also mean throat which is also neck chiti means white so those with white throats so we say rudra himself has blue throat and white throat but now we are referring to all those who have blue throats and all those who have white throats sharvaha sharvaha means those who slay with arrows who okay that's the meaning i think we have looked at sharvalinga you know even um, earlier on we have looked at shop sana mantra okay uh, means all those who kill with arrows you can say adaha adaha means low below down anything below kshama charah okay so kshama charah i have given two meanings here kshama also means earth kshama means earth charah means who move on earth chara means to move samachara means all those rudras which they move on this earth samachara that's one meaning kshama also means patient chara means kshama chara means who are always patient who continue to be patient in all situations that kind of also meaning you can take so we are saying so that's the meaning so we are referring to all those who have blue necks all those who have white necks all those who are adha below and kshama uh, chara means all those who are more on earth these are all rudras the manifestation of rudra which are like this in this world to those who rud- those rudras who have blue necks those who are with white necks we shall spread their beneficent bows across thousands of yojanas um, you can say you know those who are below also you know okay so we shall spread you know, whichever way you want to take the meaning um again we have to take tesham sahasra yojane eva dhanvani tanmasi that's why the second part of the we shall spread their beneficent bows so we, in another way we, what we can see is that um, this uh, we have covered earth 
we have covered antariksham and now we are covering what is below all the other lokas below also you can see i think brother kumar has raised his hand yes brother uh, brother uh, what that what do you mean by that are below move on earth slash our patients always okay i thought you know other means actually you know other can means that which is below us also you know other other is direction okay all the dire all the things which are below you can say uh, i i have just left it as is because you can say those who reside below us also you can say all the rudras who are below us um but you can also take the meaning as adaha kshamachara see earth is below us okay anything which moves below us on earth that means you can take all the you know small small insects that which lives below us on earth okay we can say they are also that we also you can take but other i also like the word shamachara because those who are patient those who have forbearance always okay so rudras are present like that also you know there's another uh, meaning neela griva means neela is black so there's one interpretation which says they are tamasic all the tamasic people in this world shitikanta means all white so that means all those who are sattvic you know in this world then there are sharva you know who kill everyone they are rajasic people so all those three kinds of rudras are also present but then there's a fourth kind who are completely patient they put up with anything rudras of that kind are also there in this world you can they are shitikanda means they are good people they want to do good things to the world but then there are shamachara who put up they also take absorb all the negatives in this world so bhumi also takes everything it bears with everything there's nothing in this world which is as patient as the earth that's why the earth is called mother it's a motherly tendency to put up with everything so but below but they remain below I mean they also support us so i am that's why i did not uh, give too much it's you know it's up to each person's imagination and you know visualization how you want to take the mantra so i've just given the meaning so you can say see we should also be able to see the world as positive and negative um, another word neela grivaha why is the neck given the why neck is only black why is the rest of the body black you know why are only talking about griva the neck is a place where there's a chakra called vishuddhi in you know in in yoga shastra and they will say there are seven the chakras you know the six chakras at least the seventh one is about um, this is the vishuddhi chakra vishuddhi chakra what it means is it it can cleanse anything in this world uh, you give it bad things it will clean it Uh, so that is why shiva's neck is blue because that symbolizes vishuddhi anything bad should be offered to the vishuddhi chakra and it will clean it and will make it white then it becomes shitikanta so that ability to cleanse also is there so i want to take some positive you know just to say blue neck one sola there means those who take bad things and cleanse it are nilagriva like the lord then uh, their they, their job is to clean swami earlier mentioned about the fish you know you go around and eat all the bad things and cleanse it that kind of category are called nilagriva shitikantaha means from whose throat you know all good things happen they will you know they will also cleanse with positive things all good things will come out that is also vishuddhi okay then sharvaha they will anything which is bad will be removed by them by you know attacking even a bad thought comes it will be you know the buddhi which is an arrow which will pierce it and it remove it other then they are you are supporting everything in this world those people who support and shamacharaha who will with forbearance accept 
anything in this world because there you need shock absorbers also in a car when you are traveling without the shock absorbers the shock has to be taken on by the kshama chara has the ones who are patient who absorb all the shocks in the world so rudras are prevalent if you take all these positive rudras you don't want their bows to be far away you want their bows to spread everywhere uh, so you know that's the meaning which i would take so you know all the mantras can be interpreted in multiple ways but you know i am just giving you uh, bows means subtle bodies or bodies i think that's a question i think uh, bow is the mind i don't know we looked at some time back the bow is the mind and the arrows are the thoughts that is something you know that way also you can say swami says the body is also the bow from which all every all actions come out so the bow is the place from where everything is uh, let, you know let out everything is you know all actions take place all words everything that which we do which leaves means leaves from where the bow is that is the bow so it can be the body it can be the mind from the mind there are thoughts going out from the body there are actions going out from the throat there are words going out so all that also can be looked at as uh, the book i think we i think we discussed some of this earlier on in the first anuvaka i think uh, so okay so i hope that clarifies you know uh, our imagination is the end of what all these mantras as long as we know the meaning and how we want to use it for our own understanding so we want all these positive influences to spread to thousands of my yojanas okay that is one reason i didn't like the word you keeps everything far away because there is positive positive has to be spread negative has to be removed uh, is the way i looked at okay they should be removed like sharva you know you should correct it through an arrow you know that's the meaning okay this mantra was also conceived by or received by sage durvasa chandas anushtu the lord prayed to his rudra brother sairam the rudra has another word here skanda rudra oh i see what's that please oh no it's all you know copy and paste sister i made a mistake thank you <laughs> you know sometimes uh, you i need a proofread i guess but you know i do it at the last minute rushing every week to do it um, so i copy and paste some often and uh, thank you for pointing okay, out thank but, you brother i don't know but i thought when you say skanda roop i thought about murugan and shiva <laughs> yeah, it's it's it as it is not different <laughs> yes no, it's not different thinking. but you know uh, i think this was already mentioned in one of the earlier mantras sister if you know and from there i, have, I it, it just got copied okay so because i wanted a positive you know many people think rudra means one who kills we should be afraid it is not absolutely not rudra is very positive also and you know that aspect because people who are scared will be scared of everything as as swami says when i am there what you should be scared of we should neither be scared of the lord nor should we be scared about anything we should have the confidence we will face anything in this world uh because the lord is with us you know that kind of confidence we should uh, pray with a uh, prayer to you know that i think that's very important swami always talked about only sin you should fear you love god you know that kind of thing uh, but we'll go next i will look at the next mantra neelagrivaah shitikanthaah divam rudra upashrita okay so again as you know me somebody some of you me have just neelagrivaah shitikanthaah divam rudra upashrita neelagrivaah shitikanthaah divam rudra upashrita in terms of uh, 
I think I may have not mentioned this earlier on because uh, I think a couple of points I want to mention because some of you may say divagum is what we pronounce. That gum is because the anuswara um for chanting purposes it becomes gum in Yajur Veda. So that's the reason that is not removed, that's removed here. The original word is divam. Okay, that's the reason. Shiti Kantaha. This is the second letter in that uh, varga, so it has to be aspirated. Shiti Kantaha. Kantaha. Na is the is the na is the um, the hard na. Okay, in the takara in the tavarga which comes ta ta da da na that n and ta kanta okay that you have to make uh, make sure that you chant it right otherwise there is no changes nilagriva shita kanta devo divam rudra upashita okay we will go to the meaning. So we have already looked at Nila Kriva Shitikantaha. Now Divam comes. Divam means heaven. So that's why in the Adaha we said all those Nila Kriva are below us in the other, the lower worlds, nether world. Divam is heaven. So you know all areas are covered. Okay, that's one way of looking at. But you can say gross, subtle, and this is causal okay so the nila grivaha and shitikantaha are present in heaven upashritaha means they reside in heaven those who reside uh, okay so i will just put the brackets here so that you know it's implied so the thing is so we are talking about the rudras who are present in the heaven who reside if it's heaven, how can you keep their bows away? We need their bows. Okay. Um, so because of that also, I have said, we shall spread their beneficent bows. So we receive from the heavens and spread everywhere. Okay, that kind of meaning I have taken. So divam means that which shines also, you know, that which is, uh, this, which emits light. Or That's why devas are called, because they emit, supposed to be light, they were light body, effulgent bodies. So that's the meaning of that. The again, this was also conceived by, received by Sage Durvasa. I will remove this Kandarupi. Um, I have one excerpt from Swami's discourse. <clears throat> now take a mere postcard. The cheap, unimpressive thing. Write the address with no special care. Scribble the news you like to convey. Affix the stamp and drop it into the same box. That's the post box, okay? Watch what happens. The artistically ornamental envelope is inert, while this inartistic cheap document travels a thousand miles towards the person indicated. Therefore, whatever may be the uniqueness or importance, the furor or attractiveness, the seva that you do can yield no fruit if it is done without a pure chitta thought. You are yearning to do seva and your enthusiasm while doing seva are rescuing you from harm. God is the witness. God has no desire to bless nor anger to induce him to punish. You get blessed and punished as a result of your own feelings and acts. Yad bhavam tad bhavati. As you think and behave, so it becomes. Bad deeds never yield good. Good deeds never breed bad. Neem seeds never yield mangoes. Mango seeds never breed neems. Hence, a person might be an excerpt, expert in many fields of knowledge or a master of many material skills and accomplishments. But without inner cleanliness, his brain is a desert waste 
or a massive stone with no trace of love, mercy, or expansive virtue. You may wonder why, you know, I took this. Um, see, I took it because if you put it in a post box, a letter travels thousands of miles, which is what Swami say. So whether you do a good deed, that will also travel thousands of miles. You do a bad deed, that will also thousands of miles will travel. Because the Lord is neither good nor bad. He is not going to punish or even bless. It is our own actions, our own thoughts, which bring about this. Okay. So if we send out good, that will reach thousands of yojanas. If we send out bad, that will also. So in these mantras, we are saying tanmasi. That means something which we have to do. So what do we have to do? We can't make how we, even if we want to keep the lords, keep the bows far away, we have to do something. And what are we to do is the question. Just chanting the mantra will not make that happen. You know, saying we are doing and then how, if we have to do, how will we get it done? We should let the, uh, even if you're saying keep everything away, we have to make the gods do that. How will the gods do? Is the question. And Swami gives the answer. Swami says, what is in our heart? You know, if our purity of thought, word and deed, that will yield in good results. So this, all these mantras, these 10, again, another six more mantras for us to go through. All of them basically tell what we have to do. So that whether the good bows are spread or the bad bows are kept far away. Um, so Swami, that's what Swami says. See, the thing is, even if things are kept far away, all godly things travel very fast. The light itself travels from sun to here so fast. The speed of light. But the, the power of God is much, much more fast. The thought is so powerful, it's faster than light. Within a second, we can think of the sun. The thought has already reached the sun. So Swami says, the thought is the most fastest thing in this world. That can reach thousands and thousands or millions of yojanas. So it's for all of us to take the grace of the Lord, transform ourselves and cleanse our own feelings and have positive acts and thoughts and words. And that yields good results. So that's the, all the, uh, the mantras in the last Anuvaka actually are telling us to do this. So I thought it has all of instructions from Swami how we should be. Help ever, hurt never, love all, serve all. You know, all this uh, is basically the 10th, uh, 11th chapter of Rudra, uh, Sri Rudra. So this all I had prepared for today. Um, I will pause here if there are any questions on anything which I have uh, mentioned. And if I have an answer, I will share. Yes, Brother Vimalaisa. Uh, Sairam, no, just, uh, no, when say the Rudra, uh, when we say, um, it said thousands of Rudras, what does that really mean? Uh, yeah, so you see in the, um, in Rudram, basically, brother, uh, all we have already looked at the Sarvatmaka, Sarvantaryami. So in everything we saw, the Lord is present in everything. That's why, you know, Rudra mantras cover every single thing in this world. Uh, thieves, uh, all the merchants, the mantris, the people who are warriors, uh, all the and animate, animate, trees, yeah, everything is that, covered. Yeah, that so we the, have studied, so we had to take it in that sense. That uh, sense. So oh. the Rudra, the Lord is the one who is make, has manifested himself as all this. Okay, okay. And that is the way to take, that is the multiple Rudras. Okay. Ekoham uh, Bakusha, I mean, same Rudra is manifest as many. Okay. okay. But it, many means the, okay. With, within each person, there's an indweller, which is Rudra. I think that's what we have to be Oh, yeah, yeah. Of, it is, you know, if we see something, there are all, uh, the, the gunas are also present in many different ways in all things which are manifested. 
but we mm. should understand the indwelling the seed within yeah. each one is yeah. actually rudra that's why swami yeah, that is yeah. so it, it, so we have to take it in that sense uh, okay yes yes okay okay sir i think if there are no other yes auntie you have to unmute yourself and uh, and sai ram sai is ram, it auntie. sorry is it possible for you to express in few lines what you have taught today the first four mantra please okay auntie just a summary you mean you yeah? yeah yeah summary so the first four mantras are basically saying it is a it's an affirmative prayer for us to act make things happen and what we have to make things happen the view i have taken is we have to spread the best things which we receive from gods everywhere to thousands of yojanas and we can do that through our prayer through our words through our thoughts and through our actions and the bows are the instruments which the rudras who are present around in this world grant us you know they give us food we will cover all that later you know and they sustain us they have given us all the uh, instruments and the tools in this world they are given by rudras who rule over this world who are in the skies who are in the ocean who are below us under the earth and who are in the heavens so these are all manifestations of rudra as the power of rudra which manifests in many things in this world and we have to take those and we have to spread something good out of it that is the benefit of a devotee you know the devotee receives the grace and the grace has to be spread it's not for us alone it is to be spread thousands and thousands and that's why swami gives the word a monk who has become a sannyasi sannyasi means it's not that we have to take or renounce the world and go to the forest and live he says the duty is the, for the sannyasi to move around and cleanse the society through their own uh, actions their own uh, practice and precept so these uh, these mantras in the 11th anvaka basically the first 10 mantras of the drum Uh, 11th anuvaka basically tell us that we should act we should be consciously because sometimes we will say we will do a prayer and say let everyone be good and then we just do on our own thing our thought word and deed should be such that it should be helping the world and people around us which is what swami has so you know seva if you see sing bhajan he will say walk on the streets and sing bhajans so you cleanse the environment Uh, the name of god should reach everywhere that is bhajan or prayers then swami will say uh, you uh, study you know study which is jnana marga you learn and that also has to be learned for our own benefit and also has to be shared then there is seva you know whatever is there with you you share with everyone it should not be kept for oneself alone so these rudra mantras are just pinpointing it again and again everything should be spread thousands of kilometers sahasra yojaneva dhanvani tanmasi that means our impact should be felt thousands of kilometers away, thousands of miles away and uh, we should do everything possible to do that that's what i learned from uh, the pa- the four four mantras and we are doing that because everywhere the rudra is the one who is giving us the bow he is the one who is giving us the tools he is the one who is nourishing us and we should take this and not use it for selfish purposes but for the welfare of the world In thank you very much much brother sir because we have been very yes, good and very very explanatory so happy to hear that from you sir 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 because in rudram whatever we receive pray for from god has to be shared is not for a selfish purpose it should not be then it is not prayer it is nothing good comes out of it i think that swami is and rudram basically nicely explains it is my understanding i hope saira 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 um with these words i think we'll close today
and we will meet and continue with uh, 11th and Vaka. I was asked, and you know, actually, uh, I don't know if it's coincidence or not, that uh, we would have completed the entire Namakam, you know, in a way, March 11th. I need a few more weeks. Uh, we will complete it before the uh, Veda Yajna, which for which that the Veda Naran is coming from Parthi. I also felt it is a blessing from Swami that, you know, all that we have done, he will give send the prasadam, you know. It's symbolic in the sense someone from Prashantan Elam is coming and going to do Ekada Sharudram. And I don't know whether any of you know, today is the 11th, date is 11th and we have started the 11th Anuvaka. Uh, many things, you know, you look at the date and you are overjoyed, you know. Nothing is coincidence in this world. Uh, it's Sri Rudra who we all love, uh, who is helping us. So those are my words. Uh, uh, we will close the session with uh, prayers, Saira. Om Samastha Loka Sukhino Bhavantu Samastha Loka Sukhino Bhavantu Samastha Loka Sukhino Bhavantu Om Shanti 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 Jai Sairam